Hello, welcome to Informatica Cloud Knowledge videos. In this, we are going to see how we can automate a set of REST API calls to perform operations in bulk using an external tool, Postman. These are the contents we are going to discuss in this video today. The Postman tool is one of the most popular software testing tools with which we can easily create, test, share, and document APIs. The same sample Postman call. So here uh, you can create a collection uh, under which you can have a set of requests like how it is created and to create a set of requests under a collection you can just click on the icon and add request which, was, which will create a new request and in this page in this tab you can give the API URL whichever you need to make a call on and this will show the operations which you are going to do on the API. Once you have selected the respective operations, you can pass the headers whichever is needed, either the content type, accept type, and the authorization whichever is needed, if it's no auth or the bearer token or a basic authentication. And if you want to pass any query parameters, you can pass it either here or you can pass it along with the URL. This is one sample API call which is basically a login to our IICS. So this is the base URL of our IICS. And here is our request body where we'll be mentioning a username and password. Here this is a dummy username and password. So uh, here in the authorization, it, it will be no auth as we don't need any other authorization other than the username and password. And it will be a post call. So these details, we can find it in our Informatica document, API document. So once you click on send, the API call will be made. Here, if you have a concern on exposing the user credentials, this can be parameterized also. So this is how you can parameterize them. So you need to create one variable which should be enclosed within double curly braces and you have to define these variable in the environment section. So if you could see here, we have an environment section. So here you can create one new environment and then inside that you can declare the variables. So I have created one test. You could see here the username and password whatever we have mentioned there in the request as a parameter, see it's username and pass. And if you could see in the environment, I will have declared it as username and pass and I have assigned default values for it. So here we have initial value and current value. So initial value is whatever you are defining in the initially. Current value is like uh, if you have changed it later, during the runtime, it will mention what was the initial value and what was the current value. The current value will be keep on changing as during the runtime. Since now it's parameterized, we have created the environment. How this is applied here? In the top right, we need to select the environment which we are using here. So once selected, you have to save this. And once save this request, you can click on send. So whatever value you have given there in the environments for this username and password will be accepted here and the API call will be made. The sample scenario we are going to discuss here is to update hundreds of mapping task description. So here we have taken just description, but you can update other task details like uh, any other advanced properties, the connection name or the runtime environment of the task can be updated. But just for an example, we are going to update the mapping task description in one go for all hundreds of tasks using IIC's platform REST API. So you can download Postman from the below link. So additionally, there is no other configurations required. Once downloaded, you can use it. Now let's get to the demo. As mentioned before, this is the documentation for the REST API. So in our scenario, we are going to update the mapping task configurations. So in order to do that, first we need to make a login call to our environment. For the API regulated to the login call, you can check in this document where this will be your base URL with which you're going to do the login as you will be doing in the browser. Uh, basically, uh, provide your user credentials, log into the IICS. Similar way, you'll be providing this URL along with the username and password in your request body. And once you send it, you'll be getting a session ID. 
with with which you will be using it in the next API calls for having the active session. Followed by this, second will be the get call to your configuration of the mapping task. So once you do a get call to the mapping task, either you can do it with the mapping task ID or with the federated ID or with the mapping task name. So this will be the URI which you will be using with the API call. This is to get all the configuration details that is related to your mapping task. So once you get all the configuration details using the get call, you can do a post call in order to do an update to the configuration with the updated value in your request body. So this will be the URI for your post request, which is to update the mapping task configuration details. So this update mode partial can be used as in your header if you are just going to update few of the configurations. So in the postman, I have created a collection named update MCT with a set of API calls which we are going to do. First will be the login call, second will be the get call to get all the configuration details of the mapping task, and third will be the post call with the updated mapping configuration details. So this login call, as we discussed previously, we are going to use the API and in the body we are going to create, give the username and password. And here I have parameterized the username and password and I have defined it in the environment. So the environment name is different. So we need to reselect the environment here in the drop down and then try to click on send. So once sent, we will be receiving an IC session ID, which we need to use it in the other two calls. So here, since we need to pass this IC session ID, which will be expiring in an hour, so if we are going to do some uh, 500 or thousands of calls, uh, this that will not actually take one hour, but if it's going to be bulk in more than one hour, in that case, again, we need to refresh the IC session ID. So in that case, it will be better if we directly pass the IC session ID from this response to the request of the next API calls. For that purpose, we have something called the test tab in our Postman. Here, I have written a JavaScript in order to capture the IC session ID from this response and pass it to the headers of the next two API calls. So this is a very simple JavaScript where we could see I have defined a variable named response.json where I am going to assign the entire response of this API call. So once this response is captured in this particular variable, I'm going to just extract only the IC session ID value. For that, I have created another variable called session underscore ID where I'm going to just extract the IC session ID from the response JSON, just capture. And once it is assigned, so now in order to pass it from this API call to another API call, we will need a environmental variable. So we have created one environmental variable called IC session ID environment where we are going to assign this captured session ID to the environment variable. So this environment variable will be defined in my environment. So once this API call is made, this will capture the entire response and just extract this IC session ID value and will assign to the environmental variable. And then this environmental variable will be passed in the header of my next API call. So now here if you could see the IC session ID whichever we have retrieved now is B6QI starts with B6QI. We go to the environments and see it is updated. So this will be used in our next API calls. So now if I click on this API call, send it then we will be receiving the needed response. Here we are passing a task ID and why this is parameterized is because we are going to make a bulk call so that for each and every time we cannot go and update the task ID in the URL. So the only thing which is going to change in this page is will be the IC session ID and the task ID so that I have parameterized both. And this task ID will be passed later when we are going to automate this. So next, from the get call, we will be capturing the entire response and going to pass that to our next post call. So here, just for example, since we are going to update only the description, I have just passed only the needed mandatory details in the request body. So here we have got the 
description as after release test 3 here I can update to a different value like demo test and then once I click on send I'll receive a response with the updated value so now we could see how these three API calls work but now we need to add automate all these three in this collection so how we can automate this for that we have something called runner here so you can go to the runner and here you need to drag and drop the collection which you have made so simply drag and drop it here and you can rearrange the order which you were wanted to call because for each and every call it will go in this order. So in our case we need to first make the login, then we need to get the task details and then update them. So here we have three different options. One is you can run it manually for just for example some hundreds of tasks or just five tasks or you can schedule it if you want to do this update for a frequent period of time or you can use to automate via CLI. So now in our scenario we, could, we are just going to run it manually. So here we need not define these operations and all. Just we need to create a data file where you'll be having all your set of task IDs so we are going to update. For example, I have taken only five tasks IDs just to show in the demo. So you can select the file and I had five task IDs and so the iterations have automatically changed to five. This is the file which we are having for the task ID list. So I just created a serial number for the task ID and this is the order which the API is going to be calling the task IDs. So since we are having five, the iterations will be taken as five and then we can just run the MCT. So once I click on run, the entire collection will run with all the task IDs passed to it. The first iteration will be calling all the three APIs for the first task ID. The second iteration will call all the three APIs for the second, second task ID and so on. So we could see this iteration one and here it has made a login call to handle OK. Here if you could see it's the task ID which has been successfully got the results and we have updated the task also. So if you could see in the iteration two, it is a different task ID and in the iteration three, it is a different task ID. And see here, this is shown a 400 bad records, which means something was not able to update properly in this particular task ID for which we can redo later. And also you can check all the details in the console below where uh, here with the response code, you can see what happened. So now since we are going to just update the description for all the MCTs, the same description, this particular setup is fine. But what if, if you want to update the different configurations for each and every mapping task? In that case, the same thing, however we did for the IC session ID, we just captured from the previous response call and we just uh, gave it to the next two API calls. Similarly, from the get task, since we are using the response as the request to the next call, you can just have a JavaScript to capture the entire response of this part. And before passing it to the post, call you can just make the updated changes in the job using the javascript and then make the call also you have something called monitors let me enable it and if you go to the monitor you can create one monitor where you can just give some name to the monitor and you can select your collection which we have created for this and then you need to select the environment needed for the collection and the file which you were needed for the monitoring. Like monitor is just to schedule, automated. So you need to select the file and then this is to automate. Like you can just mention if you want this to be run for every day or every week or once in a month or something. You can just enable those things and you can just whatever options are needed you can just select on it and it can create a monitor. So once the monitor is created, you can just trigger it to run so that 
during whatever time you have selected it to run it will trigger and it will update all the mapping tasks during that particular time for every occurrences which you want it to be run so this will show you all the stats once it's run so you can check all the stats here and that's the end of the demo this is the link to the documentation where we can check for the rest api urls and then this is a kb article for the same automating api calls using postman the step-by-step -step instructions along with the screenshots this link you can find it in the description of the video We would love to hear from you via support videos at informatica.com or twitter.com slash info support. And if you face any technical issues, please feel free to raise a support ticket at informatica.com services and training support services. Thank you so much. Have a good day.